Merci, Madame la Présidente. Merci d'être parmi nous, Madame Lagarde. C'est un plaisir de vous, de vous avoir ici en, en vrai. Euh, à mon humble avis, les cryptos ne valent rien et ne reposent sur rien. Ce n'est pas moi qui ai dit ça, pour une fois. Euh, ces propos, euh, apparemment, vous sont attribués par Bloomberg. Et la réalité, c'est que nous vivons effectivement un autre crypto-crash avec une perte de valorisation absolument abyssale. Euh, un hedge fund spécialisé dans les cryptos vient de faire euh, faillite aujourd'hui. Je voulais savoir, justement, vous venez de finir votre, votre propos sur les cryptos. Euh, quel était l'impact sur la stabilité financière de ces crashs Quels étaient aussi les liens entre finances régulé et non régulé, parce que c'est bien de ça dont il s'agit. On parle souvent de finances traditionnelles et non traditionnelles. C'est finances régulées et non régulées, s'il si y avait des liens assez importants ou pas, et quel était l'impact sur la stabilité financière. Merci beaucoup, Madame Lalleuc. Je pense que je vais passer à l'anglais pour que mes commentaires en réponse à vos excellentes questions soient pris en par ceux intéressés. Je pense que vous posez une question très... Topical and very timely question, and you quoted uh, me uh, in relation to uh, the value, the intrinsic value of cryptos, and it's a point that I made uh, at uh, a particular um, on the occasion of college tour in the Netherlands when asked by young students who were keen to invest uh, what I thought about the value. Uh, and the underlying assets related to uh, cryptos, and I made those points. Um, we believe, as we are embarking on this, uh, this work concerning uh, crypto assets and the risk that they pose, that crypto assets and decentralized finance have the potential to pose real risk to financial stability. And this would be particularly the case if the rapid growth of crypto asset markets and services continued in their and their interconnectedness with both the traditional financial sector and the broader economy was to in intensify. For the moment, uh, the links between the private sector crypto assets and traditional finance remain still limited. For the moment. Uh, the ESRB General Board supports the need for a quick adoption and implementation of the markets in crypto assets regulations that you all know very well as MICA. And, and certainly the ESRB is um, encouraged by the fact that MICA, that I will call for the purpose of this discussion, MICA 1, uh, will hopefully be implemented soon, but to my understanding will not be implemented uh, until 2024, uh, which is a long way away when you think at the speed at which uh, you know, market values and creativity and um, uh, greed actually uh, impact uh, those developments. So what, uh, together with staff on the ESRB, um, we, we, we decided to work on in order to, to help you actually and to help the authorities that are now taking a view and intent on regulating uh, these um, these assets, we thought about what could be added to MICA 2. So, thank you very much for completing the work on MICA 1. I think Europe will be probably the first area where those crypto assets, rather narrowly defined so far, uh, will be regulated, but we would hope that you can also look at MICA 2 and include some of the things that I'm going to mention. And this is, you know, for all intent and purposes, our genuine contribution to what could be an, an add-on to MICA 1. So MICA 1 should address the risk of interconnectedness with respect to financial institutions' exposure to crypto asset. Uh, MICA 2 should regulate the activities of crypto asset staking and lending, which are definitely increasing. MICA 2 should fully cover decentralized finance. Currently, it is focused on financial intermediaries, as I understand, and where no such intermediary exists, the legislation does not apply. And that is, to my knowledge, the case for Bitcoin. So Bitcoins will not be covered by, by MICA as current MICA 1, but hopefully MICA 2, you will take that into account. Fourth, uh, MICA 2 should regulate the issuance of crypto assets where there is no identifiable issuer. That is definitely the case for Bitcoin. So, um, to summarize, we welcome MICA 1. We encourage you to move 
forward and, and develop MECA2 that would have a larger scope and would capture better and regulate in depth uh, some of those uh, innovation in, in, uh, in these uh, unexplored and uncharted territories that put consumers at risk and where the lack of regulation is covering often uh, fraud, often completely uh, illegitimate claims about valuation and very often speculation as well as criminal dealings that we uh, see happening and that are generally transacted in some of those instruments. So that's my view and uh, the ESRB is, is really going to uh, continue looking into this and, and uh, will raise the alarm bell when it sees that, the, uh, uh, that there is a, 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 an, an interconnection risk that would, uh, that would call for, for action.